I'm very pleased to say that officially the search for the perfect replacement for the BMW F800 GT has ended. This is the BMW R1250RT and I'm 100% sure that I finally found the perfect replacement for the BMW F800 GT. So two, maybe two and a half years ago, I rode the 2019 1250RT. And at the time, I remember saying that although it was a perfect bike, a perfect touring bike, uh, I mean, there was there's basically it was just one thing that I had to say that I didn't really like about it which was it was too comfortable it made us feel almost as if we were disconnected from the road and just uh, trying to be um, yeah it was it was too it was too perfect for that almost well time has passed and I, I changed my mind. This is the perfect replacement for the BMW F800 GT and also it looks much better. The first thing that is, in my opinion, uh, ideal, perfect, is this new dashboard, this new TFT screen, five and a half or six and a half inches, I don't know exactly. I'll put all the numbers up. I mean, that's not, uh, for this review, hello, for this review, that's not even important. This is this is, uh, I don't know, it feels perfect. But anyway, uh, I, I have to provide some, to, I have to at least try and pretend I'm doing a review because uh, <laughs> I'm in love with this bike. So anyway, the, the, the first thing that is, that, that really kind of is in your face in a good way is this screen here. It's perfect, it's wide, it's got virtually the same information that you would find on uh, on any other screen except that it's um, it's wider it fills up all this massive space in the cockpit in a very nice way and you have all the information you want on there the second thing is that it now looks much much more in my opinion much much more aggressive the front end with the new lights the streamlined design as opposed to the more circular uh, round uh, optics or lights that it had on the previous version <clears throat> it looks much much pretty it looks it's beautiful actually it, it is a beautiful bike uh, on top I, I don't I don't think there are that many more I don't think that there are that many more differences you know f between this bike and uh, the previous version of the 1250 RT it looks pretty much the same this one in particular does not come with the speakers but that is an option it's an optional pack and as with BMW, normally these things are always quite optional. So, uh, but yeah, these the main things to me to take away from uh, visually uh, are the screen and functionally as well, because this screen is it's much more functional than the, the old one was. Although I did like the combination of the analog dash with the uh, the central TFT screen thing. But uh, this one, I have to say, it's perfect. And I've just ridden the 1250 GS, the 2021 1250 GS. And one of the things I noticed about the screen is that when the sun hit the screen, dire the screen directly, it was not very, very legible. And it's pretty much the same with this one. But um, the, 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 the ratio, the size ratio and I mean, it's perfect for this bike, I think. Uh, so yeah, officially I found the replacement for the F800 GT. The only thing now is, <laughs> can I afford one? I can't right now. I will have to wait. I don't know if I will ever be able to afford one of these. Uh, perhaps used, perhaps if I get a good deal on one. But as soon as I can, I promise I will buy one of these for myself. As soon as I can afford one. Yeah, the per it, it's over. Uh, yeah. So, what about uh, for those that uh, don't know? Uh, I am a huge fan of BMW. I'm a, f a BMW fan. I'm a huge fan of the Boxer engine, and this is 
obviously the 1250 uh, boxer engine uh, opposed twin cylinders uh, it produces a maximum power of 136 horsepower maximum torque of around 145 something I'll put the numbers up on the screen uh, I'm sorry if I'm disappointing you but this is not a, a review as such in the sense that I'm not going to go over all the technical bits because this is more about how this bike makes me feel it is a big bike it's not a very tall bike uh, as a as a it's a proper tourer in my opinion it's very very comfortable very very easy to ride as you can see we can flick it around almost 300 kilograms worth of, of, of bike but it's so easy to ride you can you can ride this almost as if it were the f800 gt despite of its weight and the boxer engine way down there helps keep the center of gravity very very low and despite this big huge tank here I don't know what the capacity is 30 liters maybe 25 uh, despite this it does doesn't feel top heavy at all and it comes with all the electronic amenities you might want it's got um, four riding modes echo dynamic road and rain I'm in dynamic right now it doesn't make any sense to uh, to to change it and put it on any other mode except if it's raining and the weather is really shit then it might be worth but all right now I'm doing 40 miles an hour in fourth less than three up 3,000 rpm open the throttle <laughs> and off it goes all the power in the world because of this magnificent 1250 cc boxer engine with the variable time shifting valve thing I don't know the name it doesn't matter it, it generates all the power that you produces all the power that you need anytime you need it in the rev range and wherever you are in whichever gear it's it's an amazing engine and it's very very smooth on this one but like I said it's it comes with all these electronic I mean it's got uh, heated seats heated grips uh, it's got uh, something that I've never experienced before, tried before. It's got the adaptive cruise control. So I'm going to set the cruise control now. It's on at 44 miles an hour. As you can see, my hand's not on the throttle, but the way the, work, the thing works is you can see the green light on there. You've got a button here where you can change the sensitivity of the adaptive uh, cruise control. As soon as it detects a vehicle in front of you, it will de start decel decelerating the bike without us having to do anything obviously if it doesn't find anything it will carry on and this roundabout here is probably not the best place to give it a bash but yeah this is really really impressive uh, cruise control is very handy uh, not just for longer motorway stretches but also to um, because of this now with the adaptive cruise control so let's set this to a higher speed like that 45 miles an hour but as soon as we reach or oh, they're probably going faster than me but as soon as we reach a certain distance between so it detects a car in front of me it's decelerating it's down to 43 now but let's accelerate this let's get closer to them It's, I'm not close enough. Oh, I see the traffic lights red there. I think it will start to decelerate uh, as soon as we get there. But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, uh, it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. I'm not doing anything. Slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. There you go. Very, very helpful. So why do I want to replace my F800 GT? Well, if you've seen my previous videos on this never-ending, well, it's ended now, but on this long search for the perfect replacement, uh, it's because as much as I love my GT, uh, she's getting old, and it's, she's, she has 63,000 miles, almost 64,000 miles on the clock. It's a uh, 2013, it's an 80-year-old bike, and she's already showing signs of her age and sometime soon I will have to replace her but um, 
I had to find I had to find the perfect replacement for her. And one of the main reasons, one of the main things that I really want on a replacement for the GT is not just comfort for myself uh, when I commute because I commute daily on the bike uh, I, on all sorts of weather except when it's snowing and ice. But I commute on the bike daily, so I need a bike that is very comfortable for me. And this obvious is obviously is a very comfortable bike. And I need a bike that is very comfortable for the passenger when I go on uh, trips with Mrs. Foreigner. So that is a must. And this bike is indeed uber comfortable. This is like a sofa on wheels. And in terms of uh, wind protection, in terms of weather protection, uh, you couldn't you couldn't be better off. Uh, with this bike. It's got this very wide screen in front of me so my legs are perfectly protected from the weather and it's got this massive windscreen that we can just go make it go up or down electronically with the, pres the push of this button here so it's all the way up now. I'm sorry if you're seeing through a very dirty windscreen but uh, what's happened is that suddenly the wind went away, the noise went away and I'm inside this very very quiet and calm bubble of air so everything I have to put my hand all the way out there to, to, before I start feeling the wind. So it's very, very comfortable and I'm really, really very well protected against the wind. On its higher position, it does create just a tiny little bit of uh, turbulence at the top of my helmet, but nothing much really. And uh, makes for, for the perfect ride. It makes for the perfect ride on this bike. This one also comes with the quick shifter and the auto blipper, so up and down. Uh, shifting gears without using the clutch. It is much more um, soft than the. It's much soft. It's much easier to use. Not as clunky as uh, the one on the GS. So, although I, the the quick shift, it wouldn't be my first option. But on this bike, it's very easy to 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 use, and uh, it's you almost don't notice it. So one thing that I haven't mentioned is the luggage. To be honest, I don't know what the luggage capacity is on this bike. The combined uh, luggage capacity of both panniers that comes standard with the bike uh, and the big top box. I know that the big top box is an option and it costs about a thousand pounds, which is, I think, ridiculous, very, very expensive, even though Despite BMW saying that because it's all connected to the bike, you've got a central locking system for both the bike, which is keyless, as you can see, for both the bike and all the all the luggage out in the back. Um, a thousand pounds for a top box seems a bit ridiculous, but it is what it is. And but I don't know what the combined capacity of both panniers is, but they are massive. You can fit a uh, full face helmet in them. And so for touring, especially with the top box, uh, you have more than enough space for two people uh, to put their clothes and their belongings to go on a reasonably long trip. Because when you're riding, you're wearing your, your clothes, the same clothes most of the time. So you just need a couple of t-shirts, your underwear, so, and a pair of jeans and that's it so you don't need you can travel very very light on a motorcycle tour because you'll be wearing the same thing most of the time anyway but yes very decent luggage capacity in the back for long distances right i'm almost at bmw north oxford i have to uh, give this bike back in a minute and that makes me very, very sad. And here we are. We are almost arriving at BMW North Oxford. Some time to give the RT back, which is making me very, very sad. I wish I could take her home with me, but unfortunately I can't. And it is time to uh, stop drooling and give it back. As usual, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, just give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, just give it a thumbs down. Leave a comment. And um, 
yeah i hope to see you on my next video thank you for watching till then it's a wrap Is that the boozer? It is.